The idea that the peaceful transfer of power is inherently our most valued tradition, it's not. Our, our original tradition is rebellion, is violent rebellion. That's why you have the Second Amendment. You may not like it, but that is the history of our country, unlike Canada. Any election I don't like is stolen. Any election where you get 81 million tabulations, not votes, is stolen. It's pretty simple. If I don't like it, it's stolen. If I like it, it's not stolen. If you win, it's stolen. You just heard from election deniers like Stephen Crowder and Stop the Steal founder Ali Alexander, who are now saying the quiet part loud, and they're just admitting what I think was already obvious to reasonable people. They're lying. They're lying about the elections. If the election does not go the way that they want, they're just going to pretend like it was stolen. And even if we know that what they're saying is deceitful, even if we're highlighting the incriminating things that they're saying, them admitting that they're lying, they're still inevitably going to dupe millions of people potentially into believing that elections across the country that are taking place today were stolen in the event they don't go the way that these election deniers want it to go. Now, we've known that these propagandists and politicians have been lying, but they admit that they're lying, albeit only when they're behind closed doors. As HuffPost reports, Republican Representative Dan Crenshaw claims that election deniers, they actually admit that they're lying when nobody's around, saying it was always a lie. The whole thing was always a lie, and it was a lie meant to rile people up. Now, it's gotten so bad that the chair of the RNC, one of two major political parties in the United States, has to be asked on national television, will your candidates accept the results in the event they lose? Because let's put everything into perspective here. A majority of Republican politicians running across the country for a variety of different races, from Congress to Secretary of State in certain states, I mean, a majority of them are election deniers, so what can we expect? Is every single Republican going to contest the election if they lose and they're an election denier? What's going to happen? Well, Ronna McDaniel is uh, very, very confident that that's not going to happen, but notice how quickly she changes the subject. When the process is played out and the votes are canvassed and certified, every one of your Republican candidates will accept their results, even if they lose. They will. And here's what I'm going to say, too. Everybody's talking about this election denier. This is the language I just heard it on this segment before. Democrats, I have 150 examples. I've got a 10-minute video of Democrats denying elections from 2000 to 2020. This is not what the American people are caring about right now. And let me tell you what they are worried about. Well, Our commander-in-chief, Joe Biden, going in front of the American people and talking about this and saying, oh, look at this, these issues with election deniers. Well, here's what the Democrats are. They're inflation deniers. They are crime deniers. They're education deniers. But this is literally a, okay, but this is but this I, is not what the American people are talking about. They're not talking. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to have. I, but we're, they're not we're voting on that. Okay, we're, we've been having, and I just did this, and we are doing so many uh, reports about the issues, which is important. But, but I'm talking to you, but, but Diana. But I'm talking to you as a Republican. Five days out from an national, election, yeah. for the president of the United States to give a speech and not talk about inflation, to actually say it's good, to not talk about gas prices, to say that crime Listen, doesn't I'm not exist. here, I'm not, I'm So not, they have become crime deniers, inflation I'm not deniers, here. Okay. and education deniers. Ronna, I'm not, I'm not a, the big I am issue. not, I. We just watched her scramble to change the conversation and conflate election deniers with inflation deniers. First of all, one of those things is much more serious than the other. Second of all, you're an inflation denier yourself because Republicans never talk about the actual cause of inflation, which is corporate greed. But she wouldn't do anything about that because these corporations who are gouging customers are the donors of the Republican Party. But even to talk about that, we're playing into their game because they're trying to distract us. And we're trying to talk about election deniers. They're trying to change the conversation. See how easy it is for them to get us to just talk about something else. Oh, what's that? Our candidates want to steal election? Squirrel, look over there. It's so transparent and it works. It works because I can't not address the lies that they're telling because they just throw out a bunch of lies, right? But it's not just the lies that is hurting democracy. Republicans across the country are not just codifying voter suppression laws, but they're literally suing 
to disqualify and disenfranchise votes. As the Washington Post reports, Republican officials and candidates in at least three battleground states are pushing to disqualify thousands of mail ballots after urging their own supporters to vote on Election Day in what critics are calling a concerted attempt at partisan voter suppression. In Pennsylvania, the state Supreme Court has agreed with the Republican National Committee that election officials should not count ballots on which the voter neglected to put a date on the outer envelope. Even in cases when the ballots arrive before Election Day, thousands of ballots have been set aside as a result, enough to swing a close race. In Michigan, Christina Caramo, the Republican nominee for Secretary of State, sued the top election official in Detroit last month, seeking to toss absentee ballots not cast in person with an ID, even though that runs contrary to state requirements. When asked in a recent court hearing, Caramo's lawyer declined to say why the suit targets Detroit, a heavily Democratic majority black city, and not the entire state. Hmm, I wonder why. And in Wisconsin, Wisconsin Republicans won a court ruling that will prevent some mail ballots from being counted when the required witness address is not complete. And at a minimum, these lawsuits could delay the results of these elections, delay the certification of these elections. But at worst, this could straight up just disenfranchise thousands of people in these states, not taking into consideration the people who were already disenfranchised from other voter suppression laws that were passed. And we're not even talking about the secretaries of state that could win, who have been running on essentially saying, I won't certify the election results in the event they don't go my way, in the event a Republican does not win these races. It's genuinely disturbing. Now, I want to touch on Pennsylvania a little bit more because that is a really interesting case that shows you how these election deniers can simply delay the results. And just delaying the results in and of itself is going to raise more doubt and alarm among election deniers. But this is something that they're doing specifically to challenge the results and disenfranchise voters. But here's what's happening here. The article continues. Election officials are braced for a repeat of a protracted standoff following Pennsylvania's May primary between state officials and three counties, Berks, Fayette, and Lancaster, that refused to include undated ballots in their certified results. Wolf's administration, the governor, by the way, sued those counties in July to force them to include the ballots, the majority of which were cast by Democrats, court records show. In August, a state judge ordered the counties to include all lawfully cast ballots, including those with missing dates in their certified results. Republicans then successfully persuaded the state Supreme Court court to reverse that policy for the general election in a decision released last week. The state court deadlocked on whether rejecting the ballots was a violation of voters' federal civil rights. Common Cause and others quickly filed a federal suit seeking to overturn the state court ruling on the grounds that rejecting ballots over a technical error violates the Civil Rights Act. The case remains pending. So that's from the May primary, and we still don't know the outcome of that particular case. Do you understand why this is such a problem? The Republican Party is effectively waging not just a rhetorical war on democracy by lying, but they're waging a legal war on democracy, and they're doing this only because their violent war on democracy failed on January 6th in 2021. So this is something that I think people need to be aware of today. Because today is when many people will be voting across the country if you haven't already voted, and you need to know the ways in which they're going to try to disenfranchise you. So this means means go out of your way to do your due diligence. Dot your I's, cross your T's, and make sure that there isn't anything that could give them a reason to cancel out your vote, because if they can find a reason, they will. If your signature has changed and it doesn't match your old signature that they have on file, they will try to use that against you. We're dealing with with a rogue political party that is hell-bent on destroying democracy all so they can maintain power in perpetuity. And again, they're doing this because they know that they can't win legitimately. So this is why they engage in voter suppression. This is why they lie about policy, because their policies can't actually appeal to working class voters. So they distract you with culture war issues, or they try to just straight up cheat while accusing the opposition of cheating in the event their cheating and attempts to disenfranchise thousands of voters doesn't lead to them being victorious. So it's deeply, deeply unsettling. And I expect the next week to be complete chaos as the uh, Republican election deniers who lose their elections are going to wreak havoc on our democracy by claiming that the election was stolen from them. And whenever they claim that they were cheated, 
Well, voters are already primed to believe that election fraud is a thing because of the big lie that Trump spread. So, of course, they're going to believe these election deniers at the state level as well. So if Carrie Lake loses, expect hell. All across the country, most Republicans seeking office are election deniers. So this is what we have to look forward to in this country. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started shilling for the DNC, I stopped watching, so I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.